Hello, everybody. Welcome to this group Zoom meeting. If you're watching this right now, you're probably watching the recording on YouTube. So welcome, YouTubers. Welcome, YouTubers. Um, I like the lighting I have in my office right now. I've got a lamp right right next to me intentionally because it's it's dark. So I have the end of uh, the end of daylight out the window. Very moody, perfect for a group session. We'll get we'll get rolling in a minute. I'm just gonna let a, a couple more people join live. If you are watching the YouTube recording, feel free to like fast forward the next two minutes, unless you want to hear me babbling about a few things we do during a group session. Hello, Adam. Thank you for uh, joining the chat here. Um, all right. So let's, uh, I'm, I'm just going to say a few things to, to get the ball rolling here. First of all, welcome. Thank you for joining live if you're joining live. Um, if you are on here live, just so you know, the normal disclaimer I have, this is going to go on YouTube in all likelihood in its entirety and perhaps even be put elsewhere, probably just YouTube. Um, so I love for people to interact with me. I love for people to come on video with me and, and ask questions and give their input and opinions. But if you, you know, are talking to me, you are being recorded and going to be seen or heard on YouTube. So just use your own discretion. You know, it's not a big deal unless it is a big deal for you. Um, if you want to interact with me and you don't want your, and you want your privacy, um, what I would suggest you do is interact in the chat box and you can use, you know, just your first name or a pseudonym or just, just a, another name if you don't want um, your identity known. Another way to do it too is to um, switch your name in the Zoom box so you have a different name and just talk to, to, to me via audio. In that case, it's very unlikely anybody's gonna know who you are because they're not gonna see your face. They'll just hear, see your pseudonym name and um, hear your hear your voice. Anyway, I really encourage conversation. That's one reason we have these group chats. See a lot of friendly faces that we know, um, and one special face that we're going to, that some of you know as well. Hi, Cecilia. Cecilia is going to be. Uh, I was going to tease it more, but what the hell? Uh, Cecilia is going to be co-leading this group chat with me. We've been uh, a group group coaching session with me. Cecilia and I have been talking about co-leading one of these for a while and we just haven't been able to put our schedules together well um cecilia is there anything you want to say before i do a, a short meditation i just quickly wanted to say hello and thank you tim for having me i'm really excited and he's too kind to say that it's our schedules it's my schedule uh, that is always causing the problem so i'm happy that i was able to be here this is exciting fantastic i'm excited that you're here too um yeah, we've got a lot of people who are on live are our veteran group coach call uh, people. So it's going to be a good chat. Everybody knows this is an open conversation. It's a safe, safe space. Just respect each other and we can pretty much talk about anything. Let's just do a really brief grounding meditation. Uh, we like I like to do this at the beginning of these group chats just because it, it grounds us, it kind of puts us in the the right frame of mind to do some some inner work together. I've noticed that when I've led these recently, they tend to get more and more simple. And I think that a reason for that is just because most grounding exercises, you, you could argue even most meditation exercises are about kissing, keeping it simple, stupid, and, and it doesn't get much more simple than just like having your feet on the ground or like your butt on the pillow or your head on the pillow. You're just kind of letting your body be there and not judging anything really, not judging what's going through your head. Just letting the sensations be there. Just like not anything special, just like we're here right now. 
We absolutely are not trying to achieve anything with this exercise. We are just here. If you have your eyes open like I do, you can like look out and like, like I see the, the traffic light sign and the walk sign about 200 yards from me, out the window, cars are going. I just feel my body here. This is like really a, it's like a really good vibe to have, you know? <laughs> I think a lot of the time to have to just kind of do something like this. And in my opinion, you're welcome to disagree with this, but in my opinion, this is actually like a very much like a, a manifestive vibe. You're like really, you're like in a good place to get what you want when you're this like just grounded in almost like this indifferent way, you know? H. Emily Katie. She's got that great phrase, trustful passivity. This is like just trusting in the moment, trustful passivity of what's happening right now. And as, a, as I always like to talk about, what's happening right now is always here, <laughs> you know? And depending on your outlook, you could say what's happening right now is always God or the universe or source. Like it's undeniably now. And so resting in it in this way where we're not critical or self-judgmental, doing it more often or doing it for a couple of minutes, a couple of times a day, it's, it's really, it's nice, I think. You don't have to do it obviously at all, but it's nice. And I think it grounds us nicely for, um, you know, the next hour, hour and a half that we have together. <sighs> and I usually know it's time to end these when it, I don't feel like uh, leading the group coaching session anymore. And that's happening now. So <laughs> let's go back. Let's go back to the group coaching session. Um, I was thinking we would really go open today with what we talk about. Um, yeah, for those of you who don't know, who are watching this YouTube, uh, Cecilia Hendricks uh, it is, was the head moderator, I would say, of, of the Neville subreddit. She has a, a YouTube channel as well. And her website is Unleashing Happiness. Is it unleashinghappiness.com, Cecilia? It's actually ceciliahendricks.com. Oh, it's ceciliahendricks.com, okay. Yeah, so YouTube is Unleashing Happiness. YouTube is Unleashing Happiness. CeciliaHendricks.com is, is your website. Uh, Cecilia is really, really good um, at talking about uh, habit forming and how habits affect our life and also how, you know, changing our habits affects our states. Um, she talks a lot about how, about states and what state you are coming from. And relates it to Neville's work in a really uh, down to earth way, which I think is very helpful. So maybe, I mean, that's a good place to start. Um, and after that, we'll just open it up. Um, but yeah, I mean, if, if you want to talk about habit forming or like states, the way that Neville talks about it, or just states in general, um, this is going to be a very helpful call for you today. You can ask Cecilia questions. But Cecilia, is there anything you want to say about that? I mean, I know we've had many conversations on YouTube about states and habit forming, but is there anything you want to add? Yeah, so I guess, and that's a really good um, kind of segue into things, but I would say the way that I figured out how to get this to work for me in my life was because I started looking at it from like habits and how I was spending my time and was this habit and these routines that I was doing actually aligned with like the type of life that I wanted. Um, and that felt like a big light bulb moment for me, kind of within this journey of like, oh, wait a minute, I can have this kind of, you know, spiritual connection piece. I'm 
big Neville Goddard, Goddard fan. And that's probably the teacher that I resonate the most with. And so finding the way to have that work with actually making like sustainable life habit changes was really the tipping point um, for me. So I like to pair those together to make sure that you kind of, I always call it like the, the woo woo with the, <laughs> the woo woo with like the scientific tools. Um, and it's just, it really opened up a lot in my life was, you know, being able to see how the habits and the routines that I keep, if I'm doing something each day, that's not actually in alignment with the person that I am, or what I ask people to think about a lot. It's like, how do you want to feel when you go to bed at night? then that's telling me that that's not actually the state that I'm coming from. And that's not the state that I'm dwelling in. And so pairing those together was like very eye-opening for me and very success building for me. So I've had a lot more um, opportunity open up in my life, a lot more like relationship building, um, improved relationships. I've had successes for, you know, others that um, I've either shared this with, or that I've kind of done things with, you know, like my family members and et cetera. And I just, found that this was like my aha moment. And I think everybody kind of has to figure out what aha moment makes sense for them and how to make it work in their life. And this worked in mine and it's been working in others. So I enjoy sharing about it. Yeah. Your advice is always very down to earth. And at the same time, you managed to bring Neville stuff into it, especially his later stuff, which is very esoteric often. And you somehow are able to tie in this habit building down to earth, pragmatic, you know, advice alongside it. So it's really, really helpful. Um, for th those of you that don't, don't know, I'll put a link in the description. Um, a lot of our conversations that Cecilia and I have had about Neville's work are, um, we've made a playlist of the X, X, uh, Nev mod <laughs> talks. Um, yeah, I'm just going to read the chat box really quickly. Uh, First time, awesome. Hi from Alabama. Hello. I think my aha moment is cleaning and smells. Investing in cleaning, hygiene, and smelling good is helping me on my journey. It helps me shift states. I love that. I love that. The little things. Maybe that's not even little, but that's um, so important. And that literally helps you shift states. Any thoughts on that, Cecilia? I was going to say it's interesting because um one of the things that I started with and that I promote everybody to start with is like your daily list of like daily joys is what I call it and so if you write out a list of things that just bring joy to your life um actually Tim you introduced me to Richard Dots and Richard Dots has his 955 code which is one of my absolute favorite books that I've ever read um and part of that is talking about how like for the majority of your day you're not doing techniques like you're not doing sats you're not doing this kind of stuff and so what are you doing with your time and those daily joys is like stuff that actually brings you happiness and shifts your state so it makes sense then that something that makes you feel good like cleaning and smelling good and like really being um identifying with sense helps you shift and stay focused because it's like you're bringing joy into your like own life. It's a natural way to increase gratitude without falling into like a toxic positivity loop, which is fantastic and, and very needed, especially within this community in my, my uh, humble opinion. Yeah. Maybe we'll talk about toxic positivity loops later on. <laughs> um, the other great thing about that, that I, I'll just say is it's very easy to shift your state perhaps by, you know, putting on a scent or, um, you know, if you feel bad starting to clean do the instead of moping or, you know, mm -hmm. dwelling over your computer or an email or something going and washing the dishes or something like that. It's very easy to just, you know, it's, it takes you to a different place physically, um, either through the, through your sense of smell or just by doing something like washing the dishes or cleaning a room or what have you that, enables you, I think, to change into a more positive state um, relatively easily. And that's, that's, a, that's often a key is like, a lot of times I think people are like, they feel kind of anxious or depressed and they're like, well, I want to feel great right now. You're trying to get to like the fulfilled ideal state. And if you're like really down and you want to go really high, it can be hard to do that, you know? And like, if you want to make it easier on yourself and th that's a great way, like doing these small things to make it easier and just to transition from feeling like, 
you know, I don't feel that great, but I'm catching myself before I feel real, before I spiral down um, to like, I feel pretty good and present right now. And I'm getting, I'm feeling better and better as the day goes along. A simple clean, cleaning something can, can help you do that. You know, putting on a scent can help you do that. So uh, yeah, I love cleaning. Kate loves cleaning. I find it very soothing. Absolutely. Yep. Atomic Habits. Yep. Atomic Habits is definitely a book that Cecilia often talks about, right? So, yeah, it's a yeah. good one. Yeah, yeah. Well, what happens a lot with these group calls is that people are very quiet at the beginning, um, which is totally fine. We can be totally quiet as far as I'm concerned. And believe me, Cecilia and I will yab for uh, the next 45 minutes, no problem. But <laughs> people gradually uh, get less shy. So I'm just encouraging you to, uh, if you, you can skip that part, speaking about transitioning. If you just have, a, if you have a question, you don't have to go on video. You can just ask it um, in the chat box and, you know, we'll, we'll answer it. Or if you have a comment or something like that. Um, yeah. Kate Finley is here, by the way, Generate Magic. Kate, how are you doing? You know, or do you, do you not want to talk today? Good. Okay. <laughs> um, Kate has a great site as well and uh, YouTube channel. Um, yeah. So if everybody's quiet, Cecilia and I will just keep on talking. Um, I, I'm wondering, you know, with this Neville stuff, most of these people, most of the people probably on this call are into Neville. In what are some other tips you you would have, Cecilia, in terms of like just ways to get into that fulfilled state or that state that we want to be in? Um, what are some simple ways or some of your favorite ways of doing that? So I'd say one of the first thing, I don't know if this is my favorite way to do it. It's actually kind of a crappy way to do it to start, if I'm going to be honest, but is that you have to be okay if you don't feel okay. Like it's okay to be in a state currently that you're not happy with and to accept that and be like, Hey, I do want something to change in my life. Um, and that was a big turning point for me. And I think this is like when we were talking a bit about the toxic positivity and especially because I started so much of my journey in the Neville Goddard subreddit. I don't know how many people here are familiar with it, but it can be relatively toxic positivity, um, encouraging, you know, people to remain in very abusive situations or relationships or not to seek professional care if there's like an ailment, either mental or physical. And so starting from that basis, I started a lot of my understanding even with like the vortex and vibration and Abraham Hicks trying to think like, well, I have to feel good all the time. And my biggest shifts came when I started learning like, well, actually I don't, but instead of like beating myself up or saying this is a negative emotion and I'm not allowed to feel that way. And I can't do that anymore to just really get kind of curious about it. And that actually came from another, um, book that I read more yourself that I talk about quite a bit uh, that is from a therapist friend of mine. And, you know, I just started getting curious, like, well, why do I feel this way? Do I actually believe this? Is this how I want to feel? Is there some event that's triggering this? Um, and I started getting curious about it and I stopped labeling any emotion that I was feeling as negative or really positive and just started seeing things as like being indifferent. Um, and that was huge for me because it took this pressure off, I guess you could say, like it made it where it was, I didn't have to worry about if I felt something wrong or I didn't have to worry about if I was like not doing it right. And instead I just started focusing on, okay, well, you know, if Neville says you got to pay attention to the place that you're dwelling and I start to really pay attention to the state that I'm in, where I'm dwelling and asking myself some questions like, okay, how do I want to feel when I go to bed tonight? If I want to feel successful and loved and desired and funny and beautiful and all these things, am the action that I'm actually taking right now during my day in alignment with that? And those questions are probably the quickest way to like jump me back into my fulfilled state because if the answer is no, well, then what can I do that would? So, you know, if I want to change the state that I'm in well how do I want to feel when I go to bed at night what can I do right now that's more in alignment with that it's either doing something kind for myself doing something kind for somebody else 
like you said, Tim, if you find yourself in like kind of a spiral, you can physically go move your body out of something. Um, and the more curious I got, the more stuff just like started to happen because that pressure was gone. And I was just enjoying my life more. I was doing more for myself versus spending time fretting over whether something was going to work or show up that day or not. Um, so th- those are probably some of my biggest keys is get really curious and stop assigning that things are bad or that you're doing it wrong or that it's not happening fast enough and you have the wrong feelings and you're not, you know, trying to like force a, a gratitude or to always feel like these overly positive emotions because you feel like that's the only way that things can happen in your life. Cause I, I'm proof that it's not, I am far from Zen all the time. So. Yeah. That's great advice. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I agree with you, but I, I mean, I think that's one of the best ways, honestly. I, I don't think that's a bad way. Like you see so many people get screwed up in the Neville community because they're trying to force positivity. Right. And it's tough because I don't think, I just don't think Neville spoke about this that much, at least compared to some manifesting teachers and law of attraction teachers. Um, but I mean, I really think he meant for sure, like you literally should be like looking at your states, like objectively, like in fundamentals, that bulletin from like 1953, that's like a, only a couple pages long, like that, he really, he, he lays it out there. Like, like you almost want to distance your, like you see yourself, like if, if you, you, you question, where am I coming from? Like what, mm-hmm. you know, li- like where, where am I coming from? And if you are not coming from the state you want, you acknowledge that. And then you, you know, you, you work with it. So you, you, you try to feel yourself into that state, but he didn't really give specific instructions as much as some of the teachers did, or, you know, you're talking about what's the name of that book again, the more yourself, is it called? Yeah. More yourself. Yeah. Which is an IFS related book. Correct. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I mean, IFS for instance is all, and we've spoken about this before on, on this channel, IFS is so much about being comfortable with, with where you are at and realizing these different feelings you have are like, it's okay that they are there. And like, you can right. work through them and work with them to improve your life and to have more of a default positive abundant state instead of just forcing toxic. I don't want to say to- just forcing positivity on, I have a feeling we're about to get on that. Cause I'm seeing a robotic affirming question. Um, you know, when we try to force positivity on it, it can work to a certain degree, but it's like for it to work sustainably is incredibly difficult from what I've seen. Um, and it really backfires for a lot of people, the law of reversed effort of that Emil Kuei always talked about where you're trying to will something, but you don't imagine it actually being so really comes into effect there. So you can't, will yourself to be happy you have to imagine yourself happy or feel you know feel yourself happy truly um in order to be happy more sustainably in my opinion um yeah wow wow i mean cecilia Cecilia, are you mean would you disagree with i'm trying to like fundamentals neville does talk about this i mean he talks about stepping back and looking at your state a lot i just don't think he is like explicit in how he talks about it to the degree of like, I don't know, certainly of like, you know, if we're like using IFS as a modality or something like that and like how, or like letting go, like, you know, David Hawkins letting go, like it's all about you just feel the feel like, it, okay, this is here right now. I'm just going to stop resisting it. And like, that's the manifesting technique of letting go. And like, he wouldn't even necessarily call the manifesting technique, but it's like, if you become okay with a feeling you, you're then able for it naturally, it just naturally releases itself and positive manifestations come from that either spontaneously or gradually. I'm like riffing big time now, maybe 10% of people <laughs> watching or following this. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, that's much more explicit than like something like Neville where like, he's like, he's like, you, he's like, you see where you are at and then you, you adjust, you know, you ask yourself, like, you know, am I where I want to be? Am I embodying the person I want to be? Are, are there any lectures or books or anything that like, where he gets really, uh, where he talks about that a real lot that come off, come, come to you off the top of your head? Cecilia? None that come off the top of my head. I admittedly, I read a lot 
of his lectures. So I would have to kind of go back and, and look and see if I can find areas that he does. I mean, to me, what Neville always taught, and I will say Neville did say, like, if I believe in this, I would never dwell in a thought. Like, I would never dwell in a state that's not what I want if I truly believe that imagination creates reality. So Neville does say that. And, but I think part of what he also says is like, there's a lecture, I have to find it, but he actually says in the lecture that I've been doing this for 30 years and teaching other people how to do it. And I still have to arrest my thoughts every day. And I think that's where it becomes like, where you're just becoming curious. Well, why am I thinking this? Is this where I want to be? Is this actually focused on my desired outcome? Is this in alignment with like my wish fulfilled, whichever one you kind of want to use. And that's why I've narrowed it down to just asking myself constantly throughout the day and not constantly like an obsessive constantly I should make sure that I clarify that but I just ask myself like throughout the day is this how I want to feel when I go to bed if I'm aligned with what Neville Goddard teaches and what other teachers teach that essentially like my beliefs fuel my 3D reality and the reality in the, the world that I'm experiencing is this a thought and a feeling that I want to continue to dwell in? And that doesn't mean that I can't be upset. Like I got upset with the lady at the grocery store yesterday. I'm not upset with myself about that. Like that happened. Would I prefer to react maybe differently in that type of situation? Why? Yes. Yes, I would. Uh, she said something like really rude to my children and I snapped back pretty quickly at her. Like, that's why I said, I'm not Zen all the time. Like I have annoyances. I have anger. Like I, get those kind of feelings but I'm not upset with myself for feeling those anymore and I used to be and what Neville always said is be indifferent like don't allow the emotion to overcome you that then all of a sudden that's what you're feeling it's what you're putting out it's kind of you're almost then grabbing onto it and like holding on so tight to this like feeling because you have allowed some sort of ex external condition to sway you and like he talks about you know falling off the horse and getting back on even if you do it you're fine like your state can change a million times a day like it, and it does change from the time that you wake up till the time you go to bed but what neville always said is that you should work to remain indifferent which is why emotional intelligence and emotional regulation is so important because the more that you can learn those skills the more you're able to kind of check yourself and bring yourself back without allowing these external conditions to affect you maybe in a way that you don't want them to affect you or even if it still affects you you're able to brush it off much quicker um, and get back on the horse and refocus i don't know if that actually answered your question or if i just went on a ramble no, it, it did. I mean, as well as, as well as it can be answered. And I mean, I think we both agree in a, we're trying to get across that Neville did talk about the, about like being okay with how you're feeling right now mm -hmm. and not, and basically not like spiritually bypassing it, like, but acknowledging where you are at right now and through indifference, you can, you can more easily modify your state to the desired state to the end, to the end state you want or what have you. So by no means are we saying that, or am I saying, because I was the one who made the the critical observation that Neville didn't talk about this at all or didn't believe in it. It's just he's not as explicit as we sometimes see in other places. And he, because he's not explicit, I think, at least I saw in the, like the Reddit community and I see like on the YouTube comments, people are scared a lot of the time, it seems like, to acknowledge like they feel bad or that they don't feel the way they want to feel. And they perpetuate that pain and that suffering by not accepting how they currently feel and trying to project a false sense of positivity that, that doesn't work over it, as opposed to acknowledging how they feel, ideally feeling how they feel, feeling the feelings, and then working through it, which is a more... Um, and just a healthier way to go about doing this usually for a lot of people. Um, Actually giving it more life, the more that you fight against, against it, to, exactly. to feel it anyway. So if I'm, you know, mad at a lady in a grocery store and instead of, you know, kind of working through that. And even if part of that working through that is like, Hey, I'd rather, I'd prefer not to react that way in the future. Like I can maintain my composure a little bit better than I did. And, but when you're trying to fight against it, um, 
then you're really just saying that it's there. Your focus at that point is on the problem. The focus exactly. is not on the solution. So the more that you learn like how to kind of chill yourself out, calm down, recognize where it is that you are and just think like, okay, well, what would be a solution in here? What would be the desired outcome from this? And put your focus more on that. And then like you said too, physically remove yourself, go do something else. Um, do some like things to kind of regulate yourself, bring yourself back. And then the more that you do it, the easier it becomes. Like, and I, I say that because I can only share from my own experiences, right? But with my experience, the more that I started to do that, the less I had to, because now stuff just doesn't affect me in the same kind of way. I don't look at things the same. I'm much more able to keep kind of my eye on the prize, you know, when I'm focusing on something and it just has become so much easier, but it's really only because I took a step back and said, okay, I need to figure out, you know, how to emotionally regulate myself, how to be curious, like how to give those parts of me the room to just be who they are. And one of the things that I read in More Yourself that was like really eye-opening for me, um, and I'm sure this is part of the IFS kind of stuff, but it was that any part of you is reacting in a way because it wants to feel heard and it wants to, and it's trying to protect you, right? So if you have anger and lashing out, or you're acting in a jealous kind of way, or any of these ways that you would usually deem as like a negative emotion or behavior, it's a part of you that's attempting to protect you from something. So when you look at it like that, and you're like, wow, so this is me, my mind, whatever is going on up there, trying to make sure that I stay safe, that I don't put myself in a situation that maybe in the past has hurt me before physically, emotionally, mentally, whatever it is. It just allows you like more space for like forgiveness and understanding. And then that person or that part of you that is behaving in that way, now it's been heard. It doesn't have to yell any louder because you're paying attention to it. Um, and, and that was a huge part of that book that I really, that was probably one of my favorite parts of it was like, oh yeah, I guess that makes sense because any negative way that I react, when I look at it, it truly is a, it's a defense mechanism. It's a way for me to protect myself. Yeah. Yeah. It's incredibly powerful for people who are unfamiliar with IFS. I really do recommend, um, just at least finding out the basics of it, um, it's been extremely helpful for me personally. And, you know, a lot of clients I've worked with, it's, it's helped them as well. Um, Richard Schwartz, who's the founder of, of Internal Family Systems IFS, you know, he's got that saying, no bad parts, no bad parts. And it's, it really is kind of mind blowing when you realize something like your fear or even like something as crazy as like seemingly crazy as like your paranoia, like that feeling, you know, like where you like you have a racing heart and like you feel like, you know, like you could die physically because you're, you're so nervous or something, even that is trying to protect you and help you if you go there. And I don't say that. I mean, it's one thing to say that, like I've experienced that, like, like how I look, for instance, at my fear now, and I've been very interested in looking at my fear for a long time. That's one of the main things I like to do with the law of attraction is look at my fear. But this IFS stuff has really made me more forgiving of the fearful feelings and thoughts I have. So it's an, it's just, yeah, it, it's a great, an, another great tool. Just like there's so many great tools that work alongside something like Neville's law of assumption or whatever you want to call it. Um, I'm going to feel free to add to that, Cecilia. I'm going to just look at a couple of these comments and I'll, I'll read any questions we have. This is a great question about robotic affirming. We'll start here. Tate, I can already tell you, uh, we'll get to it, Tate, and you can ask it live if, if you want, that's fine. Let me, let's do, let's go over these couple things before we do that, and then I'll get to that, Tate, but just message again if I don't get to it. Um, so this is the first question. This is a good question. Well, let's actually, you know, Kate was just saying, I found that suffering comes when we identify with conditions. Like I lost my job. This must mean I'm a failure. And then you're saying that's, 
this being indifferent is very important. And like, yeah, again, defensive mechanism. Um, these parts that we look at negatively are actually defense mechanisms trying to work for us some of the time as well. I, I think that's what you meant there at the end there, Kate. So th this robotic affirming question is, there's so much stuff out there about robotic affirming. And we talk a lot about robotic affirming on, on my YouTube channel. The question is, where can we find the balance between being positive or being delusional in order to convince ourselves that we can do something and being realistic? Great question. Um, I'll take a stab at it and I'll let Cecilia go at it. And then we can have a, a round table if anybody else wants to give their opinions or insights. Um, you, well, first of all, there's a ton of videos on, about robotic affirming and about how that ties into like what Emil Kuei talks about on my channel. I'll put that playlist below. Um, we've done actually a group call or two like this of just about robotic affirming. So I think in, in some of those videos, you'll find some, um, you know, some balance uh, to, 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 your, to your, some answers to your question, how to find that balance. Um, so hold on one second. I just want to scale back up here. Make sure I have this correct. Here we go. Um, so robotic affirming ideal, affirming and robotic affirming, big picture are the same thing. But robotic affirming feels a little bit differently, generally speaking, in the sense where when you hear somebody like Neville talk about using something like saying thank you, thank you, or like it's over, or like it happened, it happened, a short phrase over and over and over again, um, or Joseph Murphy talking about like saying like thank you, Father, thank you, thank you, thank you, like when they talk about affirming something like that, it's all about the feeling. It's all about the feeling. It's like it, it, it generates the sense of expectancy and of like, it's already happened, like it's, or it's going to happen, like it's done. It's already happened internally. I know it will manifest externally. Kue, when he talked about affirming too and saying like every day in every way, I'm getting better and better. He said, do it with the conv conviction and faith that it's gonna happen. Same thing, you build up that feeling of like, it's going to happen. Robotic affirming, one reason it's called robotic affirming is because you don't necessarily have that feeling when you're doing it. And because you don't have that feeling, so like with like Murphy, excuse me, Murphy or Neville, or Kue or Catherine Ponder, somebody like that who talks brilliantly about affirmations, they're talking about generating a lot of expectant feelings. And so you can do it for only a couple minutes and you'll still, because you have that expectancy, you'll still see it being very effective in your life in terms of manifesting something if you feel it. Robotic affirming is more like when you don't feel it. So you're just saying over and over again, you know, um, what you want. And you don't necessarily believe it or feel it. But the idea is you, you hammer it home so many times over so many days, weeks, months, that you actually, at least on some level, subconsciously, imaginatively, your mind and body starts to believe it, starts to feel that it is so, even if rationally it doesn't make any sense still. So you just keep on repeating, 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 repeating. And something else that Kuwait said is like, if you say something enough to yourself, you start to believe it. That's the idea behind robotic affirming. So, It's, I don't think it's about finding the balance. It's just doing what feels right to you for you in terms of affirmations. If you want something and you don't have it and you're unable to generate the sense of expectancy that it could happen or is going to happen, then, and you're like, and so basically like no manifesting technique, the popular manifesting technique is working well for you. In that case, robotic affirming can be a wonderful technique because you're just trying to hammer it, hammer it, hammer it, hammer it, hammer it home. And if you keep on hammering, eventually the nail's going to go in. That's the idea of it. Um, but, you know, 
it's not a fun technique for a lot of people. <laughs> it can be fun, but people force it. Um, and they have to work through a lot of resistance because consciously a lot of your mind still might be like, this is not going to happen. It's like, I'm now with my SP. 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 And a lot a big aspect of your mind is saying, no, you're fucking not. You're nuts. And it's like this for days after days after days, weeks after weeks. And that's emotionally draining. And sometimes robotic affirming only works when you're so emotionally drained that like your conscious mind just gives up and you keep on hammering at home. So it's a tool. It's a tool. It's a great tool. But to think that like, it's like the cure all for everything um, is probably incorrect for most people, you know, and it's, it's not pleasurable. Like saying, thank you. Thank you. It's over. It's over. Thank you. Like in believing that that's nice. Like that feels nice. You know what I mean? But if you aren't able to get there, um, maybe robotic affirming is something, something to do, you know, or, um, making a list like RHJ and it works the, what he talks about, you know, we did a video on that recently. Maybe that, maybe that helps. Um, so yeah, feel free, George, to, to write a follow-up question. If you have it about that, I hope that helps. Cecilia, do you have any thoughts about that? I'm just going to read this to myself. I'm just going to read this, this question Tate had. Yeah. So I would say one. I'm not um, a robotic affirmer. I have tried many times because I wanted it to, to work for me. And it just, I don't know. I do it for like eight times and I just can't. Like, and I'm not even talking eight days. Like I am just so not focused on it that I struggle. So I want to put that out there to start. But for me, I wanted to kind of touch on a little bit and I'm going to open it up again so I can make sure that I read it correctly. But it was talking about like where to find the balance between being positive or delusional in order to convince ourselves that we can do something. So this is actually where I struggled as well, George. And I was like kind of excited to answer this question. So I was like, oh, I was the same way. Like, and I really had these kind of issues with where I was like, well, how do I do this without making myself like apps like delusional, right? Where I'm trying to convince myself of something. And I've always said that this process is what I consider like a sane delusion. Mm -hmm. um, and so what, what worked for me was to start one, figuring out ways to make my days more enjoyable, which is why I started like the daily joys kind of thing. Um, and then the second part of that was to say, okay, I'm just going to figure it out. If this was the life that I was leading, and I'll give you my real life example was to no longer be stressed about bills and to like be fine with finances kind of just flowing in as we need them. I don't want to be stressed about bills. And so what I did is I wrote out what that would look like. And I said, okay, if I was this person that no longer stressed about bills, what type of life would that look like? And how would my morning be? And what would be the things that I would do and et cetera. And that's actually where the habits thing came in for me. And I leaned a lot back on like Dr. Joe Dispenza too, who's like breaking the habit of being yourself. Um, and I was like, okay, well, what are things that I can do small that would align to that? That's not me just like maxing out a credit card and going like crazy, right? Delusional that I don't have to worry about anything because I knew that would cause more panic for me. And so I just started doing small stuff. Well, I would wake up and not think about my bank account. I would wake up and think about something else. I would, you know, spend my morning kind of relaxed and maybe, you know, just doing things more that I enjoyed. And so I started to build that more into my life. And I think how this worked was that I had told myself that, well, if I was somebody who didn't have to worry about their bills, this is how I would live my life. And then I slowly started to live my life that way. And so, and I just did it, but not on a crazy scale of like, I don't want to go max out my credit cards because I don't care about bills, right? Like I didn't want to do that because I knew that would backfire on me. Um, and so I just started slowly changing that. And I started with like my evening routine and I did my morning routine and nothing crazy where I have to spend like hours and hours doing this stuff. But I was like, well, if I didn't have to worry about bills, I would probably wake up and think about what a great day this is going to be. And I would read my book and I would drink my coffee outside on my patio. And I, and it's crazy. Cause I think to me, I said, Hey, this is how you would live if you didn't have to worry about your bills. 
and slowly all these things started to happen in my life that made it so I didn't have to worry about bills. I don't remember the last time that I had a concern paying a credit card bill or I don't have debt on credit cards anymore. Um, we just bought and built a brand new house within the last year. That's like twice the size of the house that I had before. So I'm telling you from like experience, that's how I did it was saying, Hey, I can say, this is how that person would live and slowly start to live it. And every day I would also recognize these like small wins. So even if I found like 10 bucks in my pocket, I'd be like, mm-hmm, yeah, that's to my bills, $10. And I would just kind of keep moving on from that. And it snowballed into uh, a very secure financial situation uh, for my life right now. So that's how I did it to make sure that I wasn't making myself crazy and like trying to force my feelings into something. I just did it in a very small, like what is an actual step-by-step, very pragmatic and practical way that, that I can convince myself that I'm this person. And it was going super small and just doing it like bit by bit by bit. See, that's the fucking law of assumption. Excuse my French. That's it. (laughs) I that's, I mean, for, for, for me at least, like, and that's the same in my life. That's how I've always been able to apply it. It's just by like gradual, like small stuff that just builds. Yeah. And it's like, I mean, I'm, I believe the techniques 100%. Same. I believe, I, I believe, even though a lot of people are totally loopy on there, I believe the majority of the success stories on the subreddit mm-hmm. and the people comment on YouTube. But this fascination on, technique doing it quickly is just i i don't think that's sustainable for most people i think what you just described is sustainable it's like yeah. you know and it's like what's my state what what's my ideal state how can i live more from it how can i have habits or what have you that you know embody that state and and you know relax into that like that's it like that's the law of assumption in so many ways you know so yeah, that's just a great, great message. Um, and re- one last thing I want to say about robotic affirmations, and we can circle back for sure. Any type of affirmation, but certainly for robotic affirmations, like what you're saying, right, yeah. make make it your own. Oh yeah, Rob, do you have a question? Yeah. Um, Rob, if you have a question, just let me or a, a insight. Just let us feel free yeah. to. Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> sorry. I thought I was on mute. Sorry about that. No problem. Uh, no, I was just talking to my son. I'm sorry. He just got from school. I was just listening to everybody. Oh, no um, problem. My app. I don't know how that is working. I can't see myself on here. Sorry to distract you guys. No, I see uh, your. Qu- I'm going to get to your question in a, in a in like a minute. In after we get, I've got one question. We're going to get to the okay. Richard Dots question because it's a good one. So yeah, we'll gotcha. circle circle back to that too. Yeah, no I no problem. Apologies. No problem. No problem. That's a good tease. Okay. We're, we're going to get to Richard Dots, everybody. Um, <laughs> the uh, but yeah, with robotic affirmations, choose something you like. Don't do like a cliche affirmation. Do what ideally something you can feel because the more you feel it the better so like it, it, again we've i've done other coaching calls about this whatever it may be just make it your own and don't be afraid to change it so you feel it more because that's like what neville and murphy and kue catherine ponder what they're getting at with affirmations it's not about it has to be a specific thing or like i tim grimes now have data f all <laughs> that stuff it's like, what makes, what elicits a feeling? Now I get, if it's a big thing, you might, if it's something that doesn't seem like you can actually get it, like, you know, you're, you're dirt poor and you want to live in a $10 million mansion. Even so, the, the statement should excite you when you think of it, initially at least. Like I now live in a $10 million mansion. If that excites you, that's a good affirmation. And then you might modify it later on. But whatever statement you're using, make it your own. That makes it much easier to then robotically affirm. So I personally like to go um, general with this stuff a lot of the time when I do robotic affirmation type stuff, just because 
it makes me feel good and it's easy and there's not a lot of resistance. That's why Kuwait always talks about like every day in every way I'm getting better and better. There's not a lot of resistance there if you kind of believe it. Or if you just say a single word statement like peace, 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 or wealth, wealth, wealth. There's not a lot of resistance there. That can work well, I found in my own life. So let's get to this, this, um, this, this next question, which is a long one and a good one um, that I'm sure a lot of people have had. Sorry, this, yeah. Rob, don't worry about that. With these these Zoom chats, it's always confusing, especially if you're on your phone as to what what's going on and what's been seen, what hasn't been seen. So here's a question. How do we maintain faith that manifesting works when our life situation and mental state seems to be getting worse as we try to manifest a better life? Also, does manifesting really work? I seem to be able to manifest small things and see progress, but the things I really want or need seem to be getting further from my life. I've been doing all the things we're supposed to do as well, like therapy and trying to keep up with regular life activities, but I want to believe that we can manifest what we want, and yet I'm really losing faith. I do have a background of trauma and being a negative thinker for many years, so it may be that I have a lot more stuff to work through to be able to create a better life. Great question in, in insights um, and self-awareness there. Um, I just want to see if there's a follow-up here. Hold on to it. Um, we'll, I'll, I'll address this first, and then we can do live if you want. Um, so the work in, in regards to this question, and I'm sure many people listening, on, on if not live, at least on YouTube, have similar lines of questioning and, and thoughts and doubts. Um, there's a lot I'll say. And, you know, the person asking this question is familiar with my stuff. So they're going to understand what I'm saying, I, I think. Um, if you're doing therapy, if you're trying to live your regular life and you're doing work on this and you're invested in learning about this, you are doing everything right. This is not something that happens overnight for most people in terms of like it just clicks and everything clicks forevermore. I would guess if things seem to be getting worse, because I hear this quite often when I have like a consult with somebody, they learn about these manifesting principles and their life gets worse instead of better. I would guess one reason that's happening is because of the law of reverse effort where you're trying to make, you're consciously trying to make this work perhaps more than you were before trying to consciously improve your life. And inadvertently, you're using more willpower than imagination. And so the willpower aspect of you is positive, but imaginatively, your conscious mind is still doubtful that this works, that this is legitimate, that this is a real thing. And this is the work. I wish I could give you like a, some simple answer. And I, honestly, I'm sure there probably is a real, in one of the hundreds of videos or podcast episodes, there probably is the answer you're looking for in some way, in the very least the next step, or I would say to simplify it more. Like if you read the law of attraction simplified, that book I, I put out a couple of years ago, I, I bet you there's something in that book that will click for you after hearing this, you know, what I'm telling you now. But that's the work. You can't convince yourself um, overnight always and within a month or two. You have to um, be patient a lot of the time and figure out what works for you and be more than just patient, be self-loving enough to kind of explore what's going on and then to decide if it does, if it's real or not. Maybe it's not real. You got to find it out for yourself. I'll say in my experiences, this stuff is legitimate. But legitimate, what that means is different for different people. If you want to take all the relig religiosity and spirituality out of it, you could just look at it from the Kue perspective. I think like reading Kue or Charles Baudouin, his book, Suggestion and Autosuggestion, is one of the best ways to believe more if you have doubts because it's very clinical or some of like this, you know, the habit books or science books that Cecilia talks about where it's like very clinical, like they're observing stuff and it's like, oh yeah, this, you, it's very hard not to believe 
after some of the stuff that they talk about very, you know, my last video, I was talking about being very sober minded, looking at some of this stuff. If you're sober minded and are, and are like, there's something to this, then latch onto it. But if none of the stuff seems to be working, then just do other forms of self, of self, of therapy and of self-improvement. Don't, don't think in the box with it. And I also would recommend just, you know, sitting in silence once or twice a day and not looking for any answers, just sitting to sit. You know, we did some videos on that this, this past summer. And an answer will, I think, come answer what you're looking for next. But faith is tricky because faith, you can't just like turn on faith. If we could just turn on faith, everybody would do that. But like, let me give you an example. I read today, um, some of you probably saw this, I think a month or two ago, the study came out like Sudafed, you know, like decongestants. There was this study that said it's, it's um, no more effective than placebo. Sudafed. But then the study said that doesn't mean it's ineffective. You see what I mean? Because the placebo was effective. You did like, and it was and so, and that's in like a science journal, you know, like there's, I, I really have, I have faith in all this stuff just from experiences. But in the very least, I think it's easy if you're on this call to have faith when you see stuff, studies like that, some of the habit stuff that like Cecilia talks about or some of the old psychology from just like, look, look at the psychology stuff, like William James, and then like people like Kue and the hypnotists and, you know, people getting into kind of like suggestion and suggestibility in the 19 teens and twenties. And you're like, wow, there's like, there's probably something to this. That's what I would say. Feel free to have a follow-up question. I'm just going to see if Cecilia has anything she wants to add to that. Um, I'd say the only part that, that I would probably add, it goes hand in hand with what you're talking about is that I think a lot of times when you get so focused on the need to change your life and you're so focused on this like bigger picture of just an overall need to change the life, the focus is so much on this, the, the problem again, is kind of what it, what it comes out to is that like you end up focusing so much on the problem that unfortunately it's just kind of snowballing the, the mm -hmm. problem versus like focusing on the situation. And I think actually in the comments, it was <laughs> commented about, you know, would it simply be said that, you know, by focusing on this other stuff that you're able to kind of start to shift your mindset away from the problem. And I think a lot of times, like that's my recommendation to people that I, that I work with and that I talk to and that I had to do for myself. Like I had to say, Okay, I'm going to put this aside if I'm struggling this much with it, because I've had way too much stuff happen to not believe in the manifestation part. And I mean, stuff that has been like logically makes no sense to me the way that it's come through. I've had people parrot stuff back to me that I have imagined. And um, so I don't have a doubt that this works. And the more that I've built up the faith through, and sorry if you can hear dogs barking in the background, um, but the more that I've built up that faith, the more stuff has started now to happen very quickly. And I think it's because my attention is no longer being placed into the continuous problem. Um, and it's just a very, it's it's a very subtle mindset, mindset shift um, that sounds simple, but it's not always that simple to obtain. I'm going to go on mute because these dogs are going crazy. Sorry. They're not bad. Don't worry about it. The okay, dogs, good. Are, dogs are perfect. Who, who cares? It's all, it's all good. Um, yeah, totally. This is a perfect segue, Cecilia, you know, to, to, to dots dissolve the problem. Oh yeah. Yeah. Love it. Um, I've like, like if you guys have, if, if you're, if I missed your comments, cause I was too wrapped up in my extremely long answer, like there's a, <laughs> I've lost track of the chat here. I apologize to everybody. Um, so there's some great comments going on, some great back and forth here. Let's let's go to, to Rob's question about dots and bring it in with this problem thing, because that's what Richard talks about so often, how um, if you're focused on a problem, like you were just saying, Cecilia, then that's what you're focusing on. And that's your mm -hmm. state is the problematic state. Dots talks about a lot about just working on dissolving the problem, 
by not thinking about anything. He says, right. like, if they're it dissolved, the problem is like, you know, if you have a coin, it's on one side or the other. And then you got heads or tails. You still know there's tails on the other side or heads on the other side. So it's like this dualistic frame of thinking, um, which is stressful, he says. And if you go to a neutral place where there's not even a coin, let's say, then you're in, you're actually in a more conducive state to manifesting a better life, to feeling better, to being able to focus in on, you know, on the moment and have the small wins, which I saw several people in the comments saying that small wins, gradual improvement, that's what's worked for them. I mean, that's a common theme for so many people on this call, it seems like. And if you're more neutral and not focused on like, I have to manifest a better life, but like, you know, how can I feel better today? What are some small things I can do that are conducive and aligned with the state that I want to be at today and in the future? It helps a lot. And again, the 95.5 code dot says you're only going to be doing manifesting techniques 5% of your day max for most people. And for most people, it's more like one or 2%. What's right. your state, your predominant state, that other 95% of the time? That's the real thing a lot, usually. That's how you manifest is figuring out that other 95%. In the 95.5 code, he says, you don't even have to do techniques if you figure out that other 95%. It can be uh, the 100% zero you know, code, like it comes back to how you, what's your default state, your default state, you know, that, that, that's where you're imagining from. That's like how your imagining is operating from. It's uh, also where your actions are coming. Exactly. From, naturally. Right? So, yeah. So like recently I did, um, you because I had this like aha moment on how to explain this and hopefully it actually made sense but if you start any like if you start in an area and you've got like paths in front of you and each path leads to like a different desired or a different outcome not desired outcome but a different outcome whatever state you're starting in that's going to naturally determine the path that you want to take so a lot of times when you start to think about it and it's like, you know, if I use, and we have infinite amounts of paths, right? So if you want to be the healthiest version of yourself and you're sitting in, sorry, if people listen to my content and they're like, you said this exact same thing already. But so if you're starting at point A and you want to be the healthiest version of yourself, and one of those options is to get up and go on a walk. And one of them is to eat Doritos in bed. And one of them is to not actually ever out of bed and just like stay in bed all day and not brush your teeth and da, 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 da. if you're not the healthiest version of you maybe one of these sounds more appealing and is more naturally where you're going to go but if you are shifting your state then you're naturally going to get up and go on that walk like for you laying in bed and eating Doritos and not brushing your teeth all day would not even be an option of what would come into your mind so you have to realize that your state is not just because of a, a desired thing. It's not, your state is not only what you want, it's everything. So, and you can use your own personal actions and the things that you naturally want to do to determine where you are. If you want to be in a healthy, loving relationship with an SP, a specific person, but yet you are naturally finding yourself eight times a day wanting to look at their Instagram to see if they're out with somebody else. I'm going to guess that you're not coming from a state of being in a loving relationship with this person. You're coming from like a state of desperation and trying to create something. And that doesn't mean you can't change it. And you can actually change it by becoming aware of it and saying, okay, I don't want to do that anymore. If I was in this loving relationship, what would my actions be during the day? Would it be to check their Instagram? No. So I'm going to slowly stop checking their Instagram. Even if that means only instead of five times a day, I'm only going to do it three times a day. And from three times a day, I'm only going to do it once a day. And from once a day, I'm not going to do it anymore. And I'm going to replace these habits and routines with something else that is aligned with the ways that I want to feel. I'm going to take care of myself. I'm going to take care of my living space. I'm going to go clean. I'm going to do something I enjoy. I'm going to go for a bike ride. I'm going to go for a walk, et cetera. Um, and then that's how you slowly start to shift a state, especially when that you're struggling to figure your way out of. And I think that goes back to, to Richard Dots as, as well. That's where I started. And that's where I always recommend that everybody starts is just figure out the slow, small pieces. What's one thing that you could do today that's aligned with your desired outcome? Just one, like whether that's doing a meditation, 
but also like, or, you know, doing a daily joy or taking care of yourself, a bubble bath, calling a friend, doing something kind for somebody, whatever this one thing is that would align very small to this person, but recognize to your mind, I'm doing this because it aligns to who I want to be. And then I think you're just like implanting it in your mind. Well, when I do this, I'm aligned with this outcome. So the more that I do this, the more that I'm part of that outcome. And then the more that that outcome starts to come to you. I don't know if that makes sense. Made total sense. And it, it plays into Viz. You had a very good question that this Cecilia basically just answered. The question is, could it be said fairly simply that practicing daily joys, self-care, gratitude journals, et cetera, help influence the imagination of the self, which Kuei speaks about, and how this cultivation of the self positively helps with one's imagination and in turn helps with manifestations as the imagination always wins out over the will. Yes, exactly. I would say 100%. That's the whole thing. And that's the that's the habit loop. You know what I mean? Is that we do more of these things that we, these daily joys and these positive little actions, and it makes our imagination more and more positive, more and more optimistic, more and more happy. And because of that, we get more and more of that. Hence, Kue is saying every day and every way I'm getting better and better, more and more, you know, of what, what I want is coming into my life. Doing stuff you like helps that happen. That's why like in Relax More Try Less, I'm saying, you know, like the more you feel inwardly relaxed, the more activities you can find that make you feel inwardly relaxed in your day-to-day life, the more conducive state you are in imaginatively to get what you want, you know? So yeah, that's, that was a great question. Um, just a question on how do we work through doubts to come up as we affirm if something we are manifesting is not normal to us, how can we persist when our rational mind says this BS? We could have X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z. Yeah. I mean, that's, again, this is, that, that's an affirmation. That's affirmation work, uh, which suggests the, the QA playlist. If you're doing robotic affirmations, those thoughts, those rational thoughts are going to come up a lot. You just r- robotically affirm through them. Um, that's the, that's the practice if you're doing that, but Otherwise, you do the other work to make it so when you're affirming, it aligns with you. Again, a practical tool uh, that I'm getting back more into myself, and I made a video recently about, is RHJ's It Works. Just because it works, I mean, that's like a 15-page pamphlet. Um, And the, the gist of it, basically, the principles are just like, you know, write down like what you want in order of importance, look at it three times a day, in the morning, middle of the day, and at night, think of what you want on that list as often as possible. And then don't tell anybody what you're doing (laughs) and just have, have faith. It's going to happen. And that's it. So something like that is helpful. It, you know, it works as a really, it's a great, great book that the reason I haven't spoken about it more on the, on the podcast or on my YouTube videos is it's so straightforward. It like kind of is a standalone book in many ways. Um, I have a feeling we're going to talk about it more though um, soon. Uh, Just looking at some of these other questions. Maxwell Maltz and Richard Dots, very relatable, absolutely. Kue is, yes, yeah, C-O-U-E with an accent over the E. Perfect, yep, awesome. Agree, yep, this is a great comment. I, I hear something like this a lot. Agreed, when I was a Christian, manifesting was way easier because so much of it was based on the literal translations of the Bible or like, you know, just like, yeah, miracles happen, you had more faith, right? A lot of us find we manifested big things in life or everything seemed more fluid in terms of manifesting something before we knew anything about these principles consciously. And then it's like, you almost have to relearn some stuff when you consciously learn, learn about these ideas. And the other thing I think you'll find is that a lot of the stuff we learn, we're going to be like, Oh wait, I was better off before when I was just doing it naturally. Some, and then, so it's like finding the few tools that stick the few teachers that stick and realizing that like, you know, when I got into these ideas, for instance, I read like so many different books. I was trying to find so much different material. And then like most of it just didn't stick. And But it, it was a learning process. And I think everybody has that. Well, I think to that point too, to kind of add a little bit on that is that when you start to learn about it, then you start to put so much pressure on yourself. So whereas like before it was just kind of 
happening. And it was based off like faith and prayer and et cetera. Like I was raised Catholic and, um, you know, my mom like always would say like, God always provides, get, you know, give it to God, let it go, give it to God. And so a lot of times when I would do that stuff would always work out. I mean, honestly, stuff like always worked out for us. Like in the end, even when things got crappy and it got really difficult at times in the end, it always worked out. And so I kind of always had that faith based on like my mom teaching us that. And that I think is part of what you can go back on is just like learning how to take the pressure off of, you know, cause like I would have some successes and then not, and I was like, what the hell? Like I'm doing the exact same techniques, but again, like what you're saying, it's not actually the techniques that manifest anything. Yeah, for sure. Can I add something there? Um, Cecilia, just thinking when you were saying that there's a really good ULS Anderson meditation that Wayne Dyer reads, which you can listen to when you go to sleep. And he says exactly what your mum was saying, which is uh, what he's saying, there are no problems. Um, I hand over any problems I have to uh, divine spirit, to the universe. There are no obstacles. I hand over all of my questions. All of the answers come back to me. I don't have to try. I don't have to worry. I don't have to do anything. All of my, pro all of my problems will be answered. And um, it's, so it's kind of reprogramming. And I was thinking about the question that Rob had asked, almost when you feel that it's getting really hard because your questions aren't being answered and you're over-focusing over on the problem. Um, it's a really useful way of just slowing down and resetting and just letting go before starting up again. Um, and it really just fits with what Cecilia was saying because there are no problems when you look at it. Right like that it's just there's, there's nothing to worry about that's fantastic i'm happy you shared that i need to find that because that's um i think that's exactly it like in that even goes back to the richard dodd stuff of like dissolving the problem dissolving like, the there problem. isn't a yeah. problem there's no, there's not yeah. a problem there and i always kind of remind myself too like well if there's a problem there's always a solution so do I want to focus yeah. on the solution that I want or the crappy solution? Because every problem has a solution. It's either the one I want or don't want, <laughs> right? Um, and actually I, like, I, I like found that. it because I can find technology quite difficult and I'm having to learn a lot at the moment. So I was very tied up in knots with, oh, oh, oh. and I was yeah. trying to affirm technology is as easy for me as one, two, three, and it was <laughs> nothing was happening. And then I thought I'll go back to the Wayne Dyer Mm -hmm. And this week, it's just been unfolding that things I was trying to do last week that I couldn't do. I'm like, I can do it. Yay. Right. So it's just um, it's just that um, trust in myself that has come from Wayne Dyer, from ULS Anderson. So, yeah. And just like your mum. That's awesome. I love that. And I like that you have the one. I've tried to do like um, affirmations as well that are like more sing songy for me. And I kind of ran into the same thing. Where, this does not work for me. It's just not for me. Like I've done lullaby um, for forgiveness. I had family members yeah. that were like at each other's throats. And I did lullaby going to sleep where I would think of the person and like just think forgiveness, forgiveness, forgiveness over and over. And that worked beautifully within like two days their whole yeah. relationship repaired and it was awesome but I've tried to do similar to you where I was like well I can come up with like something fun and catchy and like say it all day and it just doesn't it was not I for think, me I know it is for others but it's just not for me I think it works on some things that I'm doing but I think with that I was so I was putting so much into it so when I do them and I relax and I sing along and I mm -hmm. dance and I move they work because I'm receptive but with this technology, it's easy for me. I really needed it. I was like, I've got, to, I've got to crack this. I've got to do it. And I was on all these videos. This is how you do this. This is how you do that. Not understanding it. Um, and it just, I was so invested in it. And it just, nothing was working. It was like everything was crashing and going wrong. But I was saved by Wayne Dyer. That's awesome. And you were less answered. Okay, do you want to talk at all about your... Um trampoline affirmation idea oh yeah I'm, um no pressure yes. if you don't want to yeah so i um i run in the morning on the spot um which started because i was affirming as i walked my dog 
which I still do again now. Um, and like in a rhythm, like tunes and songs as I was walking and I was finding it really effective. But then my dog had an operation so I couldn't walk her for a few weeks. And so I thought, well, I need to do some kind of cardio and I want to affirm. And I, I quite like Louise Hay. Um, so I started doing the running on the spot, affirming in the mirrors whilst running. Um, and I found because I'm moving, which is very much what you do, is, isn't it, Tim, the movement thing? Right. Um, and I was listening to Joseph Murphy this morning. He talked something about it, that um, taking away, um, you know, making you more receptive for the subconscious mind to be more pliable and allow these thoughts to come in. And what I'm finding is the, the tunes, the things that I'm affirming, there's, I can feel them sinking in. I believe them. And it, it's making a huge difference. But I think it's it's also the mirror, as Louise Hay says, because I can't lie to it. I can't, I'm looking in it and I'm, I can't muck around. I've got to believe what I'm saying. So I think that a mistake I can make when walking and not looking in the mirror, I can daydream at the same time as I can do lots of things at once. So I can be doing affirming, but also thinking about something at the same time. When I'm looking in the mirror, I'm seeing my mouth move. And so there's multiple ways in which I'm receiving the information because I'm hearing it, hearing myself saying, I'm seeing my lips move. And I'm also imagining myself saying it from another place too. So it's it's really, really sinking in. Um, and I'm finding that is um, causing a lot of shifting um, and causing me to be a lot kinder to myself because I say things like Louise Hay used to make her clients do to say, I love you, good morning, I love you. And that's quite hard to say. Now, I found it very hard to say, but it's becoming easier and easier. In fact, it's I, I'm fine, I, you know, and I'm smiling and laughing. So I have like an, my start of the day is an appointment with myself, having a laugh and jumping about and saying things that make my day good. <laughs> so that's it in a nutshell. I love that. So good. So good. Kate Howells, everybody. If you need a therapist over in the UK. Um, yeah, the uh, that that's, I mean, a great, just to show you how out of the box you can be with affirmations and using like somatic movement. And Louise Hay is a really an important person to mention there. And with the mirror work, especially like if your affirmations aren't working or like if you're doing robotic affirmations, be like, this isn't doing anything. You can do what Kate does, which is like really extreme and awesome. But in the very least, you can go in front of the mirror and start saying them. And, and then and if you do that, you might find if you're looking at yourself in the eyes and watching your mouth, watching your face, that the actual affirmation doesn't even matter. It's like all of a sudden you're talking to yourself and you might even just start, start then literally just talking to yourself, which we also talk about talking to yourself, not in a rote way, you know, like, like saying a certain affirmation, just talking to yourself openly can really open things up. And, you know, if you are implementing movement alongside doing that, like Kate does, like on the trampoline, that's really, it's awesome. Um, yeah. I just wanted to add, Tim, that I added to my day, Kate, very similar that in the mirror, I tell myself that today is an amazing day. Like, oh, good morning. Today is an amazing day. And at first I was like, okay, I feel a little silly <laughs> talking to myself in the mirror. And I'm going to, so I've talked about this on my podcast. And so I, I'm a safe place, as Tim said to share. I always had body issues as a female growing up. Like, I always kind of felt that stuff. So one of the things that I had started doing was like, talking nicely to myself about the way that I look mm -hmm. in the mirror in the nude and it was amazing how the changes that that made of like yeah damn it I do look good and um yeah and just like the way that that was like reflected back at me from the world so I yeah I love that you do that because it does it feels a little you know I do feel a little or I felt a little weird at first being like today is a great day and good morning and I love you and you look fantastic and you're amazing and but then like the more that I do it now, I just talk to myself more like that. Like it's just the way that I speak to myself. So I, I really love that. That was awesome. 
Yeah, I think prob I thinking about the mirror thing um, for me as a child, I went to a convert and it was very much the nuns would always talk about vanity being awful. And then mm. the literature we were reading was like far from the madding crowd, Bathsheba's very vain, is condemned for being too vain. So it's very much relationship with looking in the mirror was that's disgusting. Who do you think you are? Um, so that the, the beginning bit of saying good morning, I love you, was like, oh, almost like um, the exorcist gurning with um, this is awful, this is really uncomfortable. But then yeah. just feeling more and more peaceful with 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 that process. Yeah. It's yeah, a good that. start to the day. I agree. A great start to the day. Mm. I'm circling back here. It, guys, if there's something you want to ask me that we missed. Um, you can just write it in again. I just want to see some, read something Karen said that was I thought was great um, about like having a list in Kate Finley. I think you mentioned it too, like having a list of successes in a note, and like you you know, in other words, reminding yourself of successes and like this stuff working. You know, Neville says this: test a lot, try it for yourself. If you keep failing, keep trying, keep saying, "Well, I want to be surprised, and I can be surprised," and the things you try to manifest like free coffee or an early acceptance or whatever will start happening. These small successes build your faith. Keep that list close to you. Mine on a note on my phone has a title called the book of positive aspects. Yeah. It's a great, great, great way to apply this stuff and to see those gradual improvements and to remember them. Um, and then, you know, there was another comment about how quasi Joe here, who's a YouTuber who ha who's, has a lot of good videos um, including a couple of really good Neville ones. He has, this, he talks about confirmations and having like daily confirmation confirmations. So like a positive statement and then something confirming that positive statement that you did that day that happened to you, that's positive. And it can be small, you know what I mean? But like the idea is to have positive confirmation because you're positive. We usually have negative confirmations. It's like, oh, that's not going to work. This is why it's not going to work. If you have a positive confirmation, it's like, oh, this happened. It, that shows it is going to work long-term or even midterm doing something like that really builds confidence quickly um, over a few months about a certain subject that like you want to improve externally. The Adam had a question. Have you ever worked with a shadow work practitioner? I have not worked with a shadow work practitioner. Um, comment was I'm, I'm learning more about shadow work and combining it with letting go in somatic experiences, techniques such as Dr. Peter Levine's techniques so I'd like to know what are your and Cecilia's thoughts on those modalities such as shadow work, inner child healing, somatic therapy. So um, yeah, I've never worked with a, a shadow work practitioner. I'd be all about it. Um, I just have never worked with one personally. Um, I did do a podcast episode a few months ago about shadow, the shadow and how, it re, and how David Hawkins talks about it and letting go the shadow part of us. Um, I'm a huge, huge believer in somatic ther therapy. I mean, like I'm, I counsel people on movement and somatic work all the time. Like that's really my, honestly, like my first love is like move, <laughs> moving around um, and being funny and seeing how that releases, um, releases you not only physically, but mentally, like you're like everything. It's just very freeing to do that. Um, Levine's work, like waking the tiger. I never got that into it, um, but it's, hugely successful for, for some people. Um, for me, a lot of, you know, Levine's work is similar to, to like IFS in many ways. Internal family systems for me is what's worked best in terms of those modalities of just kind of like feeling the trauma and, and working with it. Um, another book I often mention that several of you on this call I've spoken to you about um, is uh, Emotional Intimacy by Robert Augustus Masters. He A lot of the stuff he talks about in terms of dealing with emotions, um, I found very helpful in that book. Uh, Cecilia, any any thoughts about that? I'm, obviously, you also are an I, IFS proponent. Um, but do you know, you know, have you ever read Waking the Tiger? No, I'm not familiar with it. And I haven't leaned into any kind of shadow work either. Yeah. Yeah. Again, all this stuff, in my experience, at least usually melds together, you know, if it's not like a yeah. complete match, like it, it melds together really well. Um, just to, a brief aside, like, I, I do think it's interesting what we were talking about with like, with like traditional Christian upbringing, and then like something like Emmett Fox's golden key, 
And then like how Neville stuff for a lot of people seems different than that. I would argue it's not. Um, mm-hmm. So like, I, I just think there's more similarities and differences there. But you see a lot of people in the Neville community get kind of tripped up because they think it's something different or I don't know. I just think new thought is so Christian based and I really consider Neville part of new thought, even though he probably did not necessarily think, think that maybe he did. I don't know. Um, Oh, just a comment here from Dino, a way of building faith now that's been helpful is identifying what I already have faith in exactly like confirmation of that. That's the unconscious stuff. I can unidentify with it once I realize it's just a state. It's a huge relief. Yes. Yep. Uh, bah, 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 bah. Yep. More talk about how movement with affirmations are good. Yep. Yeah, with movement, like if you run out of breath when you're running and affirming, then you just got to work whatever works for you in terms of movement with it if you want to use movement, physical movement. The paradox of having control of life is that someone who truly has full control doesn't need to control anything because it works out perfectly. Yeah, I mean, the more control you have, the more at peace you usually are with what happens. I, honestly, I just, for me, like whenever I hear full control, and even like when I hear like Kuwait talk about self-mastery, it seems ridiculous to me. Nobody has full control of life. I don't understand what that means. Full control of life, as far as I'm concerned, this is not critical of, of your statement. I'm just giving my take on like what full control means because you hear phrases like that a lot in LOA. Full control of life means that you're okay with what's happening right now. I mean, that's it. Like that's all you really could have any control over is now. And I think you realize you have no control and that's your control. I don't know. That's my own very subjective personal opinion. Um, High-fiving yourself in the mirror. Yep. Yeah, so that's a Mel Robbins um, thing that is like really fantastic and something to do. I mean, anything that you can like hype yourself up. And that's why I think, unfortunately, like the self-love kind of, you know, self-concept stuff, in my opinion, has been diluted, like the true meaning of it, because these mirror affirmations and telling yourself that you love yourself and being kind to your body and high-fiving you and giving yourself, you know, like accolades for doing something, like even showing up for this call, like every single person on this call can be like, oh, you know what, actually I did do something to align with my ideal self today. I showed up and I was there and I listened, whether you talked or not, like you're here, that's doing something. Um, and so I love to high five, actually like Mel Robbins quite a bit. Cause she also has the, the countdown where if you don't want to do something and you're talking yourself out of it, it's like, I'm doing it. I'm counting down five, four, three, two, one. And you just go do it. So like in our household, one of the things that was becoming kind of an issue was, you know, keeping our house clean. And I like the house being clean, but I didn't want this to only be mom's job to keep the house clean. And so we started doing this like 15 minute cleanup, which kind of reminds me of like Mel Robbins countdown. There would be a countdown, timer starts, everybody gets up and does the cleanup and it's 15 minutes. And when the 15 minutes is done, doesn't matter what's left over, we're done. It's done. And we do it after dinner. And because we know one that like once countdown's on, you don't have an option. Five, four, three, two, one, you got to get up and do it. And then once the timer goes off, we're done and it's over. That is all that it took. And it never even takes 15 minutes, right? You have four people cleaning up a kitchen. It doesn't take that long. But so, you know, we had those kind of things. And so to your point of like high-fiving yourself, it's stuff like that, where if you could just show up a little bit And if you could, you know, just tell yourself, I'm going to do this for five minutes for five minutes. I'm not going to check their Instagram for five minutes. I'm going to get up and do a yoga for five minutes. I'm going to do the meditation for five, for one minute. I'm going to look in the mirror and say something nice to myself, 30 seconds, 10 seconds. Once you start showing up in those like small things, you're just reaffirming to yourself that I'm somebody who can do this stuff. I say, I'm going to do it. I do it. I show up, I get it done. And that is self-love in my opinion. 
I went off on a tangent, but that's, so that's my true. self-love tangent. It was a it was a good tangent. It was great. I mean, that's yeah, that's it. I mean, it's so that's so powerful, you know. Another book that came to mind that I want to mention uh, is a business book, a classic business book called The Slight Edge by Jeff Olson. He that book is all about what we're talking about here. Just gradual, small actions done over and over again lead to huge results that other people don't get because they do not take the gradual, consistent, small actions. The Slight Edge uh, by Jeff Olson. We, we made a video or two about it somewhere, somewhere down the line. Um, yeah, I'm saying... I keep a notebook for successes in Evernote. Yep, that's 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 absolutely. Thank you, Theta. Adam says, yeah, I asked because there's not enough emphasis on balancing a top-down approach, affirmations, visualizing, et cetera, and a bottom-up approach in the manifesting community. In your recent video really highlights that many manifesting videos can be a bit too sensationalistic and not pragmatic. Um, yeah, the video I did, my last video was just about, I think it was called the one, the bit the your the biggest law of assumption mistake you're making or something like that. Um, yeah, one of my main criticisms of YouTube manifesting advice is that it's way too hyped up and sensationalistic. And it's like, um, how about you're just your everyday freaking life? Like, what are these people doing before and after? Like, I'm sorry. Like, I just don't see it. Like, that's the thing. Like, I don't, it's great. Like, I, I like, I think a lot of these people are happy or whatever, but like, your life is not going to just be one ecstatic moment after another. Um, in my opinion, in my experiences, the, like the happiest people I've met are just very like down to earth. You know what I mean? It's like, they're cool washing the dishes, cleaning the house, like doing the next thing. It's not like, Oh God, you know, and like, not everything is an orgasm, you know, not everything is like, you know, manifest your SP in three days, manifest a million dollars in three weeks. It's like, some of that advice is fine. You know, that's what I was trying to say in the video. And like these teachers who pump you up, that's good. Part of that's necessary. But to only see that, is that if that's basically all we see, it really gives us a perverted view of what, what this is going to look like in our daily life, uh, I think. Cecilia, do you have any thoughts on that? You saw my video about sobering up, right? I wasn't able to finish it yet, but I'm hoping that that's <laughs> you something thought I was, I think you, you thought should I was put drunk? that on t-shirts. Yeah, I just thought you were drunk. All right. Um, yeah, you should put that on t-shirts. Not everything is an orgasm. I, that, that, I like that. That's good. That might be the ne name of the next next video. Um, or can, I add, oh, can I add something to that? Or of, Absolutely. Yeah, so I think, um, sorry, I don't know if you can hear me, but um, we can hear you beautifully. George. Oh, thank you. Okay, perfect. So um, yeah, I think in the beginning, you know, like when people are like first getting into this kind of stuff, all those like, you know, videos that kind of pump you up, as you said, it can be helpful because, you know, you're coming from a place of like, I didn't believe this crap before, you know, to like, okay, maybe there's something to this. So in the beginning, maybe that does help, but I think it is important after you know to kind of like level off you know and kind of be like all right let's let's come back down to earth and just see how this actually applies you know um so yeah i completely agree with that um you know there's a place for both but i think to just stay in the realm of like uh you know just in that sensationalistic like world you know where you know just the affirm your sp in like a day or whatever um that can get people into like trouble and kind of like cause more harm, I think, in the long run. Um, so yeah, I just want to add that. Yeah, I no, I, I could, thank you for adding, adding that because I agree with you that initially, especially, it can be very helpful because it, it raises your state and expectancy. It's like, holy shit, this stuff works, you know? But like what happens for most of us, everybody on this call probably, most people watching this YouTube video is like you get into this stuff for a while. You know, like what we're talking about is like when you're not new to manifesting ideas and you realize that all these promises that these people on YouTube make in as easy as they make it sound, and dare I say it, as easy as even someone like Neville sometimes makes it sound, it's not that easy for most of us. And, you know, you can call me cynical for saying that, but even someone like Kuei, who's my favorite manifesting teacher, like 
it's it's not it's not as easy as he says. If it if it was, more people would do it. People would remember Kuwait. If it was as easy as Neville sometimes made it sound, let alone the people on YouTube make it sound, you'd you'd see a lot more obvious success than you do. The reality is it's much more of a mundane practice for most of us in a very gratifying practice if we, we let go of the sensationalism, which doesn't mean we don't occasionally like to hear very uplifting or miraculous stories. I love hearing miraculous stories. It confirms what I already know. But my expectancy isn't like, you know, I'm going to walk out my door tomorrow and find $500,000 in a suitcase and then just keep on going and like, it's like, oh, look, someone pulled up another, you know, I've got a brand new Rolls Royce in front of my house now because I, it, it doesn't work. That's just ludicrous thinking, at least from what I've seen. Like, and there's plenty of people who will argue against this, believe me. Um, we saw it in the Neville subreddit all the time. Um, but it's like detached from reality, at least most of our realities. And it detached from Neville's reality, mind you, too. I mean, Neville manifested a ton of stuff obviously right but like in many ways he lived a very normal life you know h emily katie to go to have a go on a very slight tangent here h emily katie um starts one essay she's like you know jesus was mainly a failure in his life or something like that and it's like what like he died he was you can mainly consider him a failure and it's like that kind of like people don't want to hear that on YouTube. They don't want to hear that like, you know, Neville was a normal guy. I, I don't know. I, I'm surprised how many people don't want to just look at things more soberly. Yeah, I'm still shocked by it. Uh, in, a, in a way, I become hardened, but I'm still shocked by it. That That people want to people buy into this ludicrous sensationalist interpretation of this stuff when they could be actually applying this stuff in the way that we're talking about in this call. Tate, I'm so glad to hear that. Excellent. Yeah, insights come from, any, from everywhere, guys, when we open ourselves up to them. I know that seems really cliche. That's a perfect way to end it. Um, well, we will end in a couple of minutes here. Karen, I'm going to get to this question right now. Is there any space here to discuss EMDR, self-administered? I tried this and it's helped me for self-concept. I suggested it to someone and she also said it has worked for her. Um, EMDRs, I mean, that's a modality. People do that. You know, I have no experience with EMDR. Um, I know that my hypnotherapist has, has spoken about success with clients using it. Um, so by all means, use it. If anybody wants to chime in on the chat about that. Um, yeah, Adam, I agree. I'm not going to read all these, but they're, they're, they're good. <laughs> yeah. It, you know, these videos online create a, a toxic dopamine addiction can create a toxic dopamine addiction. I used to spend hours on end watching manifesting videos and reading success stories. Exactly. Think about what that does to your psyche about this stuff. It fucks you up. It's not, I mean, again, that's why I always say get off YouTube. The only reason I'm on YouTube is to make videos saying to get off YouTube. A lot of the time I feel like, you know, well, there's a ton of stuff to share pragmatically, but like, Jesus Christ, don't, don't watch me. Like go, you know, take a walk, do affirmations, meditate, you know, relax. Like we have enough information. It's applying the information intelligently. That's hard and sh shutting up inwardly and just being with it. Oh, good. Dino's EMDR was very helpful. Excellent. Awesome. All right. So EMDR, look into it. Um, anything else? Anyone else have any, any final thoughts? I'm sorry if I missed. People can just turn on their audio if they have any final questions or thoughts or type something in here. Um, Cecilia, do you have any final thoughts? No, I don't think so. This was fantastic. Thank you. This was, thank you so much for joining. I'm, I'm so Absolutely. glad we finally, we finally got to this. Um, yeah, check out Cecilia's website, ceciliahendricks.com. Check out her tube channel. If you haven't done that, mm -hmm. if, you're still, if you're still watching YouTube videos after this. 
It's the right. problem. Everybody's, everybody's like, oh, I'm done. And then we all go back. We watch fucking YouTube videos. That goes for my YouTube videos too. Just stop watching them. Read my books instead. Um, <laughs> listen to Cecilia's podcast though. It's good. Cecilia, do you like your podcast more than your, well, you don't have to answer this here. I was, but do you find your podcast more gratifying sometimes than doing YouTube videos, Cecilia? Um, yeah, I prefer the podcast and yeah. I've been, yeah, that's probably if, out of all the content that I make, that's probably my number one yeah. uh, thing that I prefer. And my podcast is much more longer form too. I do, do go on for a long time, but, um, but they're great. I mean, yeah, yeah. Well, and you can find it on my YouTube and thank you. You can find it on my YouTube as well. So all the episodes go there um, as well. And I think to the point of like kind of this, scrolling point and I feel like I'm a bit of a broken record but I can always am anyways is that if you were like living your ideal life would you be watching hours of YouTube videos so, <laughs> it's a good question habit the habit the habit right. and the routine and it becomes a habit whether you realize it or not and the more that you do your habit the more it just becomes like you don't even realize it and that's why you have to break it um, and I had to break a, a phone mindless scrolling habit as well. So I get it, but that's all that it is, is it's a habit and it's become where you like your brain has essentially convinced yourself. This is what I'm going to go do because this is what we always do, whether you're really getting much out of it or not. And so that's why it comes back. How do I want to feel when I go to bed? Do I want to feel like I spent four hours watching YouTube videos and not applying anything? No. Okay. What can I do now? That would be different for that. And it's changing that routine. Yeah, very, very, very well. Said. I guess that's my last thought. That's Everything's great. a habit. Everything is a habit. And yeah, get off YouTube, listen to Cecilia's podcast, listen to my podcast as opposed to my YouTube videos too. I much, I've stopped doing my podcast for the time being just because it's harder to make and like just to put more thought into it. But I enjoy sharing my podcast and I feel like it's more valuable than, than most of my videos. And I feel like being on a call like this also is so much more valuable than watching <laughs> youtube videos so we'll we'll leave it with that <laughs> if you have any cool. questions for cecilia um you can visit cecilia is what's the best email for you now cecilia uh it's unleashing happiness at cecilia hendrix.com so and you can find that on any of my platforms it's yeah. very out there perfect uh so instagram if you're i don't know if you're asking me instagram or the person who does the music but timmy might want to keep this up for Instagram. Yep. So if you're looking for me on Instagram, it's unleashing happiness podcast. Um, but the chat's been a little crazy. So if I miss stuff in the chat, I apologize. That's no, it's no, no problem. Um, you did. Yeah. The, the chat's great. We actually, I think we got a lot of That's it. fantastic. Um, yeah. So yeah. Thank you again, everybody. I will put this on YouTube probably tomorrow. Um, and yeah, you can contact Cecilia with questions, she will respond if she sees it, which she will. Likewise, me, info at radicalcounselor.com. I will respond if I see it, which I will. So everybody have a good evening, or if you're someplace else in the world, good early morning. <laughs> and um, yeah, until next time, be here now. Bye, everybody. Awesome. Bye, all. Thank you.